it in there time and time again, uh, wait and see. See what, what comes out of the, you know, the release the mini. It doesn't sound overly reassuring to a lot of the mayors that are in there. Obviously, the governor has to have some priorities for this mini release. Well, I think what the governor's waiting for is suggestions from the committee. Uh, we have not put their first round of findings out, so I couldn't speak to those. I've not seen those yet. Uh, and so a couple of mayors, uh, they made comments. They weren't sure if that would be, you know, uh, encapsulate some of the issues that they're facing. My point is, wait for them to come out. Let's see what what's the, what the group is suggesting. Uh, we have a governor who gets it, who understands mandate relief has to accompany the, the tax gap. Uh, but he also is letting the process work, and, and he's letting his team, which really has a, a, a cross section of stakeholders on it, come up with their ideas. So. I, it was really, I'm trying to reassure them, wait for it to come out first, because I, I have not seen it. I think when it comes out, it's much better to react to. Governor, are we going to see big ideas in this task force with the repeal of Triborough or the loosening of Triborough or perhaps taking over county Medicaid costs? You know, uh, my sense is it should capture uh, a good cross-section of the issues that are facing cities, towns, and villages. I mentioned the mandate that I had as a mayor in Rochester. 73% of the entire property tax levy w was taken and redirected to schools, and, and city government had no say whatsoever how that money could be spent. So I think each one of those members probably has suggestions. Uh, I honestly have not seen the, the first draft of those ideas come out yet, so I'm looking forward to seeing them when they come out. Uh, so as opposed to uh, assuming what it might be, let's see what happens uh, when it comes out. Because Listen to the mayor's talking there, you, and I, they're absolutely right. You cannot balance a budget. You cannot end up dropping taxes or meeting that cap unless you have some commensurate uh, mandate relief. Governor gets it. That's why the governor put this team in place. But what the governor does so very well is he brings all the stakeholders together. And uh, when they all get together, I think when the different interests can be heard out, I'm anxious to see what they suggest when they, the first round. And, this, and keep in mind, when the first round of ideas comes out, and I'm going to answer one of the questions, the governor has the latitude to also make some of his own decisions afterwards, but he wants to wait and respect the process and see what they're suggesting. Lieutenant Governor, the uh, last in, first out policy that's being pushed by New York City, some of the upstates and big five districts are also looking to that, the city of Rochester. Do you think that's something that should be considered, that should be a broader bill that includes the big five school districts? Well, I know that uh, the governor is, and his team, is working with Mayor Bloomberg discussing uh, that issue. Uh, I would say anything at all that we could change a system that would end up increasing graduation rates for our kids, especially the Big Five. Uh, as a former mayor of Rochester, when we spent over 20000 per student, but graduation rates fluctuate between 39 and 50 percent, uh, it, it's the system has to be re-examined and looked at. And I think anything that will help make changes that will create a greater sense of success for our kids is a good thing. So you can see uh, all the big five is, is moving toward that. I pushed for school governance changes last year. And a lot of the mayors in the big five are waiting to see what happened with that. And uh, it passed the assembly two to one, and uh, it was not taken up on the floor of the Senate. But I think you'll see that bill come back at some point time and time again because of the frustration in all the cities uh, with regards to that system. Well, you uh, as mayor push for that. Is that something you're going to push for now as lieutenant governor? Well, I, I will uh, defer. As lieutenant governor, my, my role is to serve the governor, and, and the governor wants changes in, in across the state that will create a, a better environment for New Yorkers. I'll leave it at that. I think the mayors, you'll see mayors in upstate cities. I saw Mayor Brown was, uh, he was quoted in the Buffalo News a couple weeks ago uh, about some of his desires with the schools. Uh, you're seeing mayors across the state throw up their hands in frustration. Just like you saw, I listened to mayors in, in NICOM today. They're on the front lines. They're, they're the ones that are dealing with the, the core services. And anything we can do uh, to take us from number one in spending and number 34 in results, we should be number one in results. Uh, and I think nobody would complain with the spending if you had commensurate results to go with it. Do you expect the legislature to be able to uh, react quick enough on the mandate relief forms with the April 1st deadline? I don't want to uh, project what the legislature will or, uh, legislature will or will not do, but uh, I do believe that one of the most important things the legislature could do is pass an on-time budget. Uh, an on-time good budget because the people of this state have looked at, at this system for so long. I think that the two ways you create a greater sense of confidence among all New Yorkers, pass an on-time budget, uh, pass one with the courage to reduce spending, and pass ethics reform. And those are two things that the governor's pushed for. I support him 100 percent on that. And I think those two things in, its, in themselves will help uh, start us restoring the faith that New Yorkers have in our government. Are those Last recommendations question, coming out this week? Uh, I'm, I'm thinking this week. Uh, I don't, I've not seen them yet. Uh, my sense is sometime this week. I don't want to put a date on it. It could be this week, could be next week. But I think you'd expect the first round pretty soon.
Governor, you, you mentioned uh, working and contrasting Governor Cuomo's approach with some Midwestern governors who are cracking down on labor. Do you think that Triborough is a good idea to either roll back or restructure some of its elements? I think what New York State has to do is look at everything that currently exists and how we make the state stronger. And, and Governor, Governor Cuomo's strength is he doesn't come out and just throw on the gloves and go to war. He tries to bring the stakeholders together and, and get things done. You have a, a state out west that is in essence paralyzed right now. You have a governor here in New York who has brought people to the table. The Medicaid re redesign team, uh, when you look at what he did there to, to accomplish what he has by bringing all the stakeholders together, it shows that how he does business is the right way. And I think what people can realize that uh, for those that do not want to change, that you can't, in this day and age, you cannot dig in and expect to hang on to the past. It's a new day in New York. We have a new governor who gets it. Uh, and I think it's really incumbent upon everyone to come to the middle of that table. And that, that's the only way we're going to be successful. So uh, certainly I understand all the aspects from Triborough and others. I, I would leave that to the first round of the mandate relief team. I'm, a, I'm actually very anxious to see what they're suggesting when they come out. But as a state, uh, we cannot go down the same path. I mean, when you look at the definition of insanity is doing the same things over and over again and expecting different results. Uh, and we can't expect that. We have to, it's a new day. What the governor did, which I thought was incredibly uh, a good thing, was uncover these built-in accelerators. I don't think anybody really knew outside of, of the Capitol these 13, 14, 15 percent accelerators over the years. That is what has crushed taxpayers across the state. And if we had the results that matched the investments, people might not complain as much. We don't. And we're number 50 in business climate. We cannot remain number 50. The, the public sector it, it, it cannot be the job creator. If the public sector uh, sees itself as a job creation tool, that is why taxes are so crushing. It's the private sector that creates jobs. And we're chasing them away. And that's what the governor gets. The, the governor's focus with these regional councils is to go from 50 to 40 to 30 to 20 to 10 on up in terms of its uh, friendliness and support of business. That is what's going to help get the economy back on track in the state. Thanks, everybody. Thank